Hello friends, in last lecture we have learned about singular value decomposition. In this lecture we will continue singular value decomposition and we will see some of the properties and applications of singular value decomposition. In the later part of this lecture we will define various matrix norm. So, first let us understand the geometrical interpretation of singular value decomposition. So, just look here. Suppose I am having a unit circle and these two vectors one is blue and another one is red. So, I am having these two vectors if I apply a transformation A which may be a rectangular matrix also then this particular circle transform into this ellipse having this orientation. Now, what is meaning of that in terms of singular value decomposition? So, as you know that singular value decomposition is A equals to U sigma V transpose. So, V star star is transpose in case of uh, real matrices. Now, when I apply this uh, A onto this circle, so uh, it will become let us say this object is my someone uh, uh, B. So, U sigma V star into B. So, first I will apply V star on it. So, once I apply V star on it which is an orthogonal matrix because V is an orthogonal matrix. So, V transpose then orthogonal matrix rotates the object. So, what will happen it will rotate this object by some angle based on the value of V transpose. So, now I am having the same circle, but orientation is different. Now, I will apply sigma on it. Once I will apply sigma, so sigma is having scaling factors and those scaling factors are proportional to singular values. So, it will scale this circle and it will deform into an ellipse. If both singular values are equal sigma 1 equals to sigma 2, it will remain as a circle otherwise it will become an ellipse. Where this distance will be sigma 2 and this distance will be means ratio will be sigma 1. After that what will happen? I will apply u on it, u is again an orthogonal matrix and it will rotate this ellipse in this way. So, this is the geometrical interpretation of singular value decomposition. Here what we are having? We are having two rotations and one scaling. So, in this way we can interpret a singular value decomposition that it is a sequence of transformation first rotation then scaling and then rotation. So, this is the geometrical interpretation of singular value decomposition. Now, we will discuss some of the properties of singular value decomposition. So, let A be a M by N real matrix means having real entries and rank of A equals to R. Let us consider that the singular value decomposition of A is U sigma V transpose. Now, if the rank A equals to R, then the first R singular values of A will be non-zero. So, what I want to say that rank of A matrix equals to number of non-zero singular values. The range of A that is the range space of A is given by the first R columns of the matrix U. So, as you know that A is a M by N matrix. So, it is a linear transformation from Rn to Rm. Okay. So, what will happen? Range of A is given by the first R columns of the matrix U. What will be the size of matrix U? It will be of M by M. So, what will happen? We will be having m dimensional vectors and how many vectors? R vectors that is the that is the rank of A. Those 
m dimensional r vectors those are the first r columns of m by m matrix u will give the range space of a that is they will form the basis of range space of a. Similarly, the null space of a is given by the last n minus r columns of v that is the solution space of a x equals to 0. So, what I want to say what I want to find out a x equals to 0 and a x equals to 0 means u sigma v transpose into x equals to 0. So, from there I can say that it will be 0 when we transpose x equals to 0 because when this matrix will operate with a 0 vector it will give you 0. And from here what I want to say that last n minus r columns n is the size of v n by n is the size of v and r is the rank. So, last n minus r columns of v form the basis of null space of A. Now, what I want to say in other word that last n minus r columns means the columns those are associated with the 0 singular values will give you the null space of A. Similarly, if you talk about the range space of A transpose, so you can see easily A equals to u sigma v t. So, A transpose will become transpose of u sigma v transpose that is v sigma t u transpose. So, now what I want to say that the in the similar way that the range space of a t is given by the first r columns of v and the null space of a transpose is given by last m minus r. Earlier it was n minus r, here it will be m minus r because now it will be a transformation from R m to R n that is A transpose. And by the rank nullity theorem rank is R which is equals to A rank of A equals to rank of A transpose. So, here nullity will become m minus R. So, that is why I am taking these m minus R columns and these columns are orthogonal in fact orthonormal because the matrix u and v are orthogonal matrices. So, they are obviously linearly independent. Okay. So, last m minus r columns of u will form the basis, uh, basis of null space of A transpose and the range space of A transpose is given by the first r columns of u uh, sorry v. So, these are some of the properties you can directly if you are having the singular value decomposition of a transformation or a matrix you can directly find out range space, null space, rank, nullity all these kind of thing. Another application is how to find what is the relation between SVD and pseudo inverse. So, I am having singular value decomposition as A equals to U S V transpose. Let A is M by N matrix. So, here U will be M by M orthogonal matrix and V will be N by N orthogonal matrix and S is a M by N matrix. Let rank of a equals to R. So, what I will be having? I will be having sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma R greater than 0 
and then rest of the eigen uh, singular values will be 0. Now, what will happen if I calculate A inverse because A is a rectangular matrix. So, how pseudo inverse I will define here it will become U. So, I am writing let us write sigma. So, U sigma V transpose this become V T inverse sigma plus that is I am writing for pseudo inverse and u inverse. As you know V is an orthogonal matrix. So, V transpose equals to V inverse. So, V transpose inverse will become V transpose transpose and I can write it V. Then sigma plus and u inverse again since u is an orthogonal matrix. So, u inverse will become u transpose. So, if u and v transpose are given you can easily find out v and u transpose. Now, how to write this sigma plus? So, I will tell you how to write this sigma plus. So, let a be a 3 by 3 matrix. I am taking some examples and singular values are sigma 1, sigma 2 and 0. So, sigma 1, sigma 2 are not equals to 0 here means I am having two non 0 singular values and 1 0. So, in this case what will be sigma? Sigma will be sigma 1 0 0 0 sigma 2 0 and 0 0 0 because your sigma 3 is 0. Now, in this case what will be our sigma plus it will become 1 upon sigma 1 0 0 0 1 upon sigma 2 0 0 and like in usual cases if we are going for inverse the diagonal matrix is having entries like a 1 a 2 a 3 then inverse will be having diagonal entries 1 upon a 1, 1 upon a 2 and 1 upon a 3, but here it will become 1 upon 0 in this case. So, simply I will replace it by 0. So, if it is less than a very small entry or 0, close to 0 or 0, in that case simply I will replace it by 0, not by the reciprocal value because that will not be defined or that will become a very large value. So, this is the case of square matrix. If I am having a rectangular matrix let us say A B 5 by 3 matrix ok. In this case sigma will be something like this. sigma 1 0 0 0 sigma 2 0 0 0 sigma 3 0 0 0 0 0 0. So, this will be our sigma. Now, what will be pseudo inverse of sigma in this case that is sigma plus it will become a 3 by 5 matrix and it will be first entry will be 1 upon sigma 1 if sigma 1 is non 0 if sigma 1 is 0 it uh, simply that will be 0 matrix only then 0 1 upon sigma 2 0 0 0 0 0 1 upon sigma 3 0 0. So, if sigma 3 is 0 let us say it is 0 here in this case instead of 1 upon 0 I will write simply here 0. Similarly, if a is 3 by 5 matrix. In this case sigma will be 3 by 5 that is sigma 1 0 0 0 0 0 sigma 2 0 0 0 0 0 and then sigma 3 0 0. In this case pseudo inverse of sigma will be something like this. 1 upon sigma 1 0 0 0 1 upon sigma 2 0 0 0 1 upon sigma 3 
जीरो 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 एंड अगेन द सेम रूल इफ इट इज जीरो और वेरी क्लोज टू जीरो सम ऑफ द सिंगुलर वैल्यू वी विल रिप्लेस इन द सीडो इनवर्स बाई जीरो ओनली सो इन दैट वे यू कैन राइट सिग्मा प्लस रेस्ट यू नो हाउ टू फाइंड आउट इफ वी ट्रांसपोज इज देर हाउ टू राइट वी एंड ट्रांसपोज ऑफ यू एंड देन बाई मल्टीप्लाइंग दीज v sigma plus and u transpose you will get the pseudo inverse left right in both the cases only difference will be how to write sigma ok so this is the application of singular value decomposition for calculating the pseudo inverse let us see an example of this so find the pseudo inverse of a where a is a 2 by 3 matrix and t j of a r 4 11 14 8 7 and minus 2 so first we will find out the singular value decomposition of a which is given by this is my matrix u this is the matrix sigma and this is the matrix v so here if you see that u is minus 3 upon square root 10 1 upon square root 10 Minus one upon square root ten and minus three upon square root ten. Here I am having singular values of a as six root ten and three root ten, and these are coming from the eigen values of a transpose a. So if you calculate or a transpose, so a transpose will be a two by two matrix, and eigen value of that will be three sixty. And 90. If you are going for a transpose a, it will become a 3 by 3 matrix, and eigen value will be 360 again, 90 and 0 because one uh, dimension is increasing, and it is having rank 2. So obviously, third eigen value will be 0. So I am having this sigma 1 0 0 0 sigma 2 0, and then this is my matrix V. So, if you carefully see, the columns of these matrices are orthonormal. That is pairwise orthonormal. They may, uh, they form a set of orthonormal vectors. Now, in the previous slide, we have seen that the pseudo inverse of A is given by V sigma plus U transpose. So here I am writing U and transpose here. This is my matrix V, so I am writing as such, and then this will become. It is of size two by three, so sigma plus will be of size three by two, and it will become one upon six root ten zero zero one upon three root ten zero zero, and if you multiply these matrices, you will get pseudo inverse, and it comes out to be. Minus point zero zero five six point zero seven two two point zero two 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 point zero four 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 point zero five five six and minus point zero five five six. Okay. And if you calculate here a into pseudo inverse of a, you will get. You can verify that you will get the identity matrix of order two. That's why it is the right pseudo inverse here in this case. So this is the example it means application of singular value decomposition for calculating pseudo inverse. Another application the same matrix I am having. And find the range space of A and null space of A. So, if you recall from one of the previous slide, the range space of A is given by the first R columns of matrix U, where U is a orthogonal matrix and R is the rank of A. So, hence this is my matrix A. So, hence range space of A is given by just I have not taken normalized one. Minus three, minus one. That is the first column, and the second column is one and minus three. So these two vectors in R two are linearly independent, 
and they are forming the range space of the matrix A. Similarly, null space of A is given by the last col uh, last n minus r columns of the matrix V. Here n is 3, r is 2. So, last column last one column. So, last one column is minus 2 by 3, 2 by 3, minus 1 by 3. So, if I am not normalizing it, I can write it simply minus 2, 2 and minus 1. So, hence rank of A is 2, nullity of A is 1. So, rank plus nullity equals to the uh, vector space R 3, which is a, a because A is a linear transformation from R 3 to R 2. So, in that way if singular value decomposition is given you can easily find the basis and the basis for range space as well as null space. Now, come to the second part of this lecture. So, just again consider that uh, you are having two vector spaces V and W defined over the field F and now define a set of linear transformation to for having all the linear transformation from V to W. So, to is the set containing all the linear transformations defined from vector space V to vector space W. So, if you carefully see the set to forms a vector space over the field F, you can verify it easily because 0 transformation will be there, it will be closure, it will form an abelian group with respect to uh, addition of linear transformation and so on. Now, define the operator norm T operator norm as maximum x belongs to V and x is non zero norm of T x with respect to W upon norm of x with respect to V because T x will be the vectors in vector space W. This norm is called the operator norm on the space tau where tau is a space of linear transformations. So, let us understand it in other way in terms of the matrix. So, I am having a matrix A which is of order m by n having real entries. We can define the matrix P norm H. So, P norm of A equals to maximum x naught equals to 0 A x P upon x. And here this particular uh, we can generalize it for different values of P. For example, if I take P equals to 1, then this become the matrix 1 norm okay? and it is given by the maximum 1 to j to n summation i equals to 1 to m and absolute a i j. So, what this one is saying? So, if you carefully see it, I am running this summation over i from 1 to m. So, I am taking the sum of the columns. And what kind? Uh, wha if you are having negative entry, I am taking the absolute value. For each columns, I am taking the sum of the absolute entries of individual columns, and then I am taking the maximum one. Similarly, you are having the infinity matrix norm, and just what we are doing in this case, instead of column sum, I am taking the row sum, and out of this, whatever row is giving me the maximum sum. I am taking that as the infinity norm. Another norm is that is called a spectral norm that is given by the largest absolute eigenvalue or the singular value largest singular value. So, a spectral norm is nothing just the spectral radius of the matrix because what will be the spectral radius it will be the largest absolute eigenvalue. So, as I told you this is in terms of eigenvalue we can write in this way and this two norm is also called spectral norm as I told you. We are having Frobenius norm of the matrix A and Frobenius norm is nothing just the square root of the sum of the square of the singular values and that will be nothing just square root of the trace of a transpose a as I am giving here. So, these are different terms which we are defining over the matrix. 
and all these norms are having own importance we will see later. A matrix norm is said to be unitary invariant if the norm of u a v equals to norm of a and that is norm of sigma in singular value decomposition of a. For all orthogonal matrices u and v of appropriate size, appropriate size means where this product is defined. So, let us take an example. So, find the different norms of the matrix. So, my example is of the matrix and what are the entries of matrix 0 1 1. So, first column is 0 1 1 sorry first row and second row is root 2 2 0 and third row is again 0 1 1. So, let us say this is my matrix A. So, first let us take one norm. So, one norm will be maximum of column sum. So, what is the sum of first column? Root 2, sum of second column is 1 plus 2 plus 1 4 and third column is again 1 plus 1 2. So, here this comes out to be 4. Please note that if I am having minus 1 here, still it will become the 4 because I am taking the absolute value. So, at this moment I am taking as such plus ok. Now, infinity norm will become the row sum. So, it will be maximum sum of first row is 2, sum of second row is 2 plus root 2 and sum of third row is again 2. So, it comes out to be 2 plus root 2. Similarly, the spectral norm will be the maximum absolute Eigen value of A or sigma 1 of A that is the largest singular value of A that is the equal both are the same thing. So, in this case if I check here it comes out to be 2 root 2. So, you can verify it easily. Now, if I talk about the propanious norm, so it will be square root of trace of A transpose A. So, let us first calculate A transpose A. So, A transpose A equals to 0 1 1 root 2 2 0 and 0 1 1 and then I am having a, a will be 0 1 1 root 2 2 0 and 0 1 1. So, this comes out to be 2 2 root 2 and then 0 1 0 2 root 2 1 plus 4 plus 1 6 and this will be 2 then 0 this will be 2 and this will become 2. So, here trace of this comes out to be 2 plus 6 plus 2 that is 10. So, it will become square root 10 that is the provenience norm of the matrix A. So, in this lecture we have learned some applications of singular values that how to find out range space, null space of a given matrix using the singular value decomposition, how to calculate pseudo inverse using singular value decomposition and then we have defined some of the matrix norm and we have seen by the help of an example that how to calculate all those. In the next lecture, we will again see a very 
important application of singular value decomposition in machine learning that is the low rank approximation. These are the references for this lecture. Thank you.